want to hear more about Lord Shiva, there's no more time tonight for speaking because there's other programs. But join the Parikrama and there will be a lot of talking about Lord Shiva. There's many Shiva temples we visit on the Parikrama. So we invite all of you to participate in that program. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thinking about what to speak about this morning, I was looking in Srimad Bhagavatam and I remembered the pastime in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam where Nanda Maharaj in the residence of Vrindavan observed Shivratri. And it's described there that Shivratri is not observed. Shivratri is not observed every year, but on one particular occasion, Nanda Maharaj came with some other Brijbasis and they went to the place of Ambikavan. Ambikavan, we understand that there's a temple of Lord Shiva there. Ambika means the wife of Lord Shiva and so Lord Shiva is also worshipped in that place. So it was described there that Nanda Maharaj had gone there to this place. There's some discussion. Uh, Srila Prabhupada in the Krishna book where he describes his pastime, he says Ambikavan is in Gujarat. But then when I read the Srimad Bhagavatam 10th canto, there in the commentaries uh, is stated that Jiva Goswami, oh no, no Jiva Goswami says it's in Gujarat, but Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, he says Ambikavan is in the north northwest of Mathura. So there's some difference of opinion about exactly which place they went to. But the point is that Nanda Maharaj, the residents of Vrindavan, did go there to worship Lord Shiva, to observe the Shivaratri festival. Now why would the Vaishnavas want to worship Lord Shiva? This, is, this has to be understood. Because most people, when they worship Lord Shiva, they have some material desire. Either they want some material enjoyment, they want some kind of, they have some request they want. Maybe, you know, many people worship Lord Shiva to get a good husband, or maybe they want to have another child and so on. They want wealth, they want material prosperity. And often people worship Lord Shiva also simply for impersonal liberation. Some rare souls may worship Lord Shiva to become an associate of Lord Shiva, to go to Lord Shiva's abode, which is in Kailash. But there's a very special thing which you can get from Lord Shiva, which the Vaishnavas come to Lord Shiva for, and that is to request him to give them pure devotion for Lord Krishna. Just as the gopis worship Katyayani, to get Lord Krishna for the husband. In the same way, Nanda Maharaj and the residents of Vrindavan, they all went to worship Lord Shiva to get devotion for the Supreme Lord. And it is described, of course, at that time, when the Prishpasis went there to Ambikavan, they spent the night there. Usually Shivratri is observed throughout the night. We have it very early. This is very early for Shivratri. Usually it's in the midnight. If you go to Nepal, Kathmandu, there's a famous temple, Pashupatinath there, and there will, the big crowd will be in the middle of the night. But we are Vaishnavas. We like to sleep early and wake up early. And so to protect our own sadhana, we have the Shivratri festival earlier. We should also mention that, that we didn't usually have the Shivratri festival. In Srila Prabhupada's time, we didn't have this Jagannath Mandir, and we never observed Shivratri while Srila Prabhupada was with us. I, when I joined the movement, I was kind of taught to have a little bit of disrespect for Lord Shiva. In fact, one devotee told me that one time a devotee was getting initiation, and they gave Srila Prabhupada some rudraksha for beats, for initiation. And Prabhupada took them and dropped them. He said, oh, very hot. <laughs> so, so, hearing this kind of thing, I was thinking, you know, be careful about Lord Shiva. But over the years, we have come to understand much more about Lord Shiva and the importance, the value of Lord Shiva. Sanatana Goswami was a very great devotee of Lord Shiva 
And you can read particularly in his book, Brihad Bhagavatamrita, where he glorifies Lord Shiva very greatly. So Lord Shiva, as we heard, he's the greatest Vaishnava. And by serving the Vaishnavas, we can get the mercy of Krishna. We cannot just simply worship Krishna and disrespect Lord Shiva. Prabhupada would tell us sometimes, he said, Lord Shiva is God in the material world. Krishna is God of the spiritual world. But Shiva is a God here in this material world. We have many important instructions from Lord Shiva. Usually Lord Shiva, of course, would give instruction to his wife, Parvati. And we can see some of these instructions in Srila Prabhupada's books. Most notably is, he talks about the chanting of the name of Lord Ram. Rame Rame Namo Rame Sahasra Nama Yam Shri Rama Nama Vararini That of all, all the names, that uh, 1000 names of Vishnu is equal to once chanting the holy name of Lord Ram. So Lord Shiva was instructing his wife. His wife was chanting the Vishnu Sahasra Nama. And Lord Shiva wanted to eat his supper. He said, you don't need to chant all these names, just chant the name of Lord Ram one time. This is equal to 1,000 names of Lord Vishnu. So this is one of the instructions given to us by Lord Shiva, the power of the holy name of Lord Ramachandra. The name of course, Lord Ram is the name of the Supreme Lord. And then another important instruction which also comes from the mouth of Lord Shiva, he says to M Mother Durga, Aradhanam Sarvesham Vishnod Aradhanam Param Tasmataradaram Devi Tadiyanam Samacharam Lord Shiva is speaking to his wife and he's telling her that of all kinds of worship, the worship of Vishnu is supreme. Aradhanam Vishnu Aradhanam Param That it is worship of Vishnu which is supreme. That is actually the mode of goodness, worship of Vishnu. But then he said, the most important instruction comes in the second half of the verse, tasmat tarataram devi tadiyanam sanacharam, that even greater than the worship of Vishnu is to worship those things in relationship to Vishnu. And that is why we're here today, that Lord Shiva is in relationship to Vishnu. As we heard, he's not exactly Vishnu, he's the transformation of Vishnu. And we can pray to Lord Shiva to please grant us pure devotion for Lord Krishna. That's even greater than the worship of Vishnu. Just like we worship Tulsi Devi in the same mood. We worship Mother Ganga in the same mood. And we worship our founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, in that same kind of manner. That please help us on this path of love and devotion to the Supreme Lord Krishna, who is your worshipful Lord. So Lord Shiva has that kind of power. He's very merciful. He's very kind to the fallen souls. He, can, he gives mercy particularly to those in the mode of ignorance. Lord Shiva's residence is more in the crematorium. He's often there and he appears at this time of the night, just at the sunset. He seen to be appearing along with his different followers, ghosts and hobgoblins. So we want to seek the mercy of that personality, Lord Shiva, that he is so kind, so magnanimous to give mercy to the people in ignorance. In Srimad Bhagavatam, we learn how Lord Shiva will take sometimes ghosts and he will place them in the womb of people who have sex at inauspicious times. And in this way, he is helping these ghosts to be freed from the ghost body. He's giving them a birth in a body.